Hello everybody, it's Wendy, and as you can see, I have a bit of a mess on my bead mat. Well, you can't really see, but you'll see here in just a minute. It's going to be a real big mess here in just a minute. But um, I have this piece that Barb sent to me, and ooh, a jump ring flew out of somewhere. And I love this piece. I think it's so pretty. And she challenged me to do something with it. <laughs> so um, Carrie had sent me an email or a, a YouTube video of a lady who used it kind of in a asymmetrical way on a bracelet with a dangle here and it was very pretty and I did it I actually filmed it and it looked really cute while I was filming it but then when I put it on a form it just did not hang right and I wonder if the lady that did hers how hers ended up hanging because the way this is curved it's just curved too much to put on the side like this and then have a straight it just didn't look right. So I have a feeling that hers probably um, didn't end up the greatest either, but you know, she didn't, I don't know. It was still in the video and it looked pretty on, but on the form. But when I got to messing with it, it just didn't hang right. And I don't, I didn't see any way that it was going to. So I took it apart and this is going to have to be used on the bottom. It just is. It's just, um, yeah, it's just too curved to go on the side. It just doesn't, this comes in too far. If you do it this way, it just comes in too far to do on the side. So I'm going to put it on the bottom and I'm going to redo this necklace because Michelle sent me these gorgeous leaves and I love these and I thought they would be so pretty to dangle from this. And she sent me a bunch of different ones. So I've got these little ones with the gold in them. And I know it's gold and silver, but there's not enough gold in there to really um, make a difference. And I put some beads with it, I think, that are going to tie it together. And then these little petals as well. So I'm going to try to incorporate all these little petals in here. Um, love them. They're so pretty. And I love them together. All the colors of them see here together. I just thought they were beautiful. So we're going to be using those. So you're going to need, if you want to make this necklace, you're going to need a um, piece of some sort for the bottom. Now you could hook things together. If you had filigree and you wanted to hook some filigree together, I have these little branch links right here that I'm going to do up the sides, but you could even hook these together like this. I know Bargain Beadbox had these a while back, so if you still have some of these, you could even hook these together to make a piece or all facing um, up like this. I mean, you could do it any way you want it. But a good thing, another good way to make a piece like this would be some um, connector, just four or five connectors that you hook together. So there's lots of things you can do. Filigree came to my mind. If I had like filigree pieces, I would hook together to do something, make something bigger like this. But you're going to need something there. It doesn't really matter what. Um, you're going to need some leaves of any sort. I've got all kinds of leaves, but I just wanted to use these ones that Michelle sent. So I've got some bigger ones. I've got some smaller ones. Um, you're going to need these little leaf branches if you have them still from your bargain bead box before. Or if you don't, you can make your own little links up the side. You don't have to do it just like I am. Or we're going to do some bead links up here too, and you could just do all bead links if you wanted to. But I am going to incorporate these in just because I thought they looked really good with this. Um, and then I've got some little metal leaf beads that I don't know if I'll use. I've only got four of these, so I don't know if I'll use these or not, but I pulled them out. Um, I've got bead caps. Now I've got these. The, these are six millimeter bead caps. And then I've got these little tiny um, three, four millimeter bead caps. And I have both on my website. I have these little tiny ones on my website if you want to get these, because I'll show you here in a minute how cute they look on some of these beads. And then I've also got six millimeter ones in, in all different colors on my website. Um, I'm going to be using a couple of clamshell covers, a couple of lengths of Coriana chain, and this is all on my website as well. I actually just got the clamshells in in gunmetal to match the gunmetal chain, and I got more gunmetal chain. So I've got rose gold, gunmetal, gold, and platinum, this bright silver, and an antique silver. So I have five colors now of Coriana chain up on my site and matching clamshell covers. Um, okay, you're going to need a lobster or whatever clasp. You can use anything, a toggle, whatever. You're going to need two crimp beads. Actually, 
I'm wrong. We're going to need four clamshells and four crimp beads. So, yeah, I just, like, totally forgot that we have to finish both ends of this. <laughs> Not just one. So, let me grab out a couple more clams or another clamshell and some more crimp beads. So four clam shells, four crimp beads. I'm sorry, I just was not thinking when I was doing this a few minutes ago. I was so flustered when the last one didn't work out. I was just like, oh, what am I going to do now? And then when she sent those petals, I really loved the way they looked. So I wanted to incorporate them somehow. But I've been so um, scattered today. We're, <laughs> we're getting ready to go out of town. And there's so many things that I need to do today. So I have been, I'm just picking out crimp bees right now I have been um just like wandering from project to project today <laughs> in an aimless manner and really getting a whole lot of nothing done um I sorted a bunch of bead soup I talked to Heidi for about two hours on the phone um I need to do laundry I actually did get a load in um but that's all I've done with it yeah I'm just I need to pack I haven't packed a thing um I need to figure out what I want to take with me on the trip to beating wise because I'm going to have hours and hours in the car to do something. I just, I'm so scattered. I can't figure out what I want to do. So I thought, well, <laughs> I'm going to sit down and try to make this necklace because a lot of times when I'm scattered in other ways, I can be creative, <laughs> but I don't know. We'll see how it works out. Okay. So four current beads, four clamshell covers. You're going to need some wire. Now this is, um, 20 gauge, just silver beading it's just wire just artistic wire no big deal um I am using one of the lucite flowers these are the hand painted flowers that I have on my website there's tons of different colors and this is a tiny um a tiny one a 14 millimeter these are 22 and I have these on my site too in this teal color and it matched really well so I wanted to use those um you're going to need and where did they go I just had two they're completely gone. I had some, um, some bead caps out here. Where did they go? Okay, well, I'll grab a couple and then replace them when I find the ones that are rogue on my bead mat somewhere. Okay, these bead caps, I'm going to be using a couple of those. They are on my website as well. And then I've got some fire polish beads. Ooh, oh, the mail's here. The mail's here. That means we get to see our old friend, Mailbox. Alexa, stop. <laughs> Sorry, Chris has it playing the Blue's Clues mail song whenever the mail comes. And actually, it was just Chris opening the mailbox. It wasn't the mailman, unfortunately. So <laughs> I was hoping my bargain bead box would come today, but apparently it's not going to. Um, okay, so these are some fire polish. They're kind of, they're an emerald with like a um, gold luster to them. They're six millimeter. I do have a lot of fire polish beads up on the website as well. I don't know if I have this color. I did, but I don't know if it's, if they sold out or not. And then I've got some four millimeter fire polish in this beautiful like emerald iris something or other. They're just gorgeous. So we're going to use those for some sparkle. And then we've got these green beads. These are on my website as well. Frosted glass, eight millimeter. Um, there's a bunch of those up there. And then you're going to need eye pins and head pins and your tools. A little piece of extender chain, some jump rings. And I've got some silver spacer beads out here. Not sure if I'll use them or not. These are on my website too. Most of the stuff you can get on my website if you want, want it. Okay, so that's about it that, of the supplies that you're going to need. And then you're going to need your tools, of course. And so get everything together if you want to make this necklace. Um, and we'll get started. Okay, so let me just throw out a disclaimer here. I am not good at wire wrapping. Okay, not good. I've tried it don't like it, don't want anything to do with it, but I'm going to have to do it for this <laughs> necklace. Um, I'm wanting to layer these leaves, and I've done a couple because I had to make sure I could even do it, but I wanted to layer one on top of the other for these dangles on here, and so I've made three, and I'm going to make a couple more, and I'm going to show you how I wire wrap these leaves, but I'm not good at wire wrapping, guys. It is not my forte. I don't like it, but yeah, we're going to do a little bit of it. So uh, don't judge me on my wire wrapping skills. They're terrible. I know they are. Don't even, you know, don't get on here and say, you shouldn't do wire wrapping because you're terrible at wire wrapping because I know, but <laughs> I have to do it. So <laughs> what I do is I take a little bit. Of, I don't cut the wire off the spool even. I just take a little bit. I'm going to stick my leaf in here 
and I don't measure. I just go about where I think it needs to go. I'm going to bend this up into like a little, make a little triangle above the bead, the leaf, if you can see that. Okay. Now this one that's still on the, the wire or the spool, I'm going to take this one. And I'm <laughs> so not technical with this, guys. I'm terrible at wire wrapping. But I'm keeping the one on the spool straight. I'm taking this one and I'm going to wrap it around. I bend it down to like kind of a 90 degree angle. And I'm going to wrap it around this one as neatly as I possibly can, like twice. <laughs> and all this does is secure this one so it doesn't just come loose. That's all you're really doing. But I try to do it neatly. I am not a fan of wire wrapping. Okay. I'm going to take these little cutters and I'm going to snip that right off there. Pop it over there. Okay. Now, you got to make sure that you don't have a sharp thing sticking out here. So, you just take your pliers and mush it down as best you can. All right. So, here's what we've got. We've got a, a little leaf with a little triangle wrapped and we've got this piece sticking up. Okay. So, I just try to straighten it out with my fingers as best that I can. I'm going to go way up here. Like, I don't know. What is that? An inch and a half? Two inches? And cut. All right. So, here's what I've got. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to take this right above the little wrap that I made and bend it at a 90 degree angle just like that okay I'm going to take my round nose pliers and stick them in here and I'm going to go up and over just like that if you can see my pliers are in there then I'm going to rotate my pliers up and take that on around and so now I've got this. So I've got my pliers in the little loop and then this little loop sticking around. Now, this loop never looks pretty when I take my pliers out. It always looks really horrible. But I just grab it with my chain nose pliers. Just try to straighten everything up. I'm telling you, I'm just horrible at this. Okay. And then I grab this piece and I'm just going to try to very neatly wrap it around here like twice. Just it just so it's secure and is not going to come undone. So right about like that. That's all I'm going to do. <laughs> oh, I have to go around a little bit because it's in the front. I don't want it in the front. So let me grab this and go one more little spin around. Okay, there we go. And now I'm going to cut it. <laughs> and it's not that great. I know. I am terrible at wire wrapping. I'm going to tuck this little thing in here and then just try to straighten that up a little bit. All right, there we go. That's as good as that one's going to get. Yeah, it, I know. It's so bad. Okay, now I'm going to take a jump ring. Probably this is like a six millimeter jump ring right here. And I'm going to take my little leaf and I'm just going to put the leaf on the jump ring. These leaves, well, my other ones went on really easily. This one's going to struggle. Why are you being difficult? The other ones didn't have any trouble. Hold on. Let me grab another jump ring. Um, of course, I get on camera. I've done three of these. I get on camera, and the leaf that I pick is going to be difficult. Let's try this one. Okay, there we go. That one went easier. I don't know why. Okay, I'm going to close up my jump ring. And then I'm going to take another small jump ring. And I'm going to take my jump ring, the leaf, and add it on here. And then I'm just going to hang it right here in the wire wrap thing loop on my leaf. Okay, and there's what we have. <laughs> All right, there we go. I've got four of them. I'm going to make one more because I think that I'm going to hang five on here. So, sorry guys, you have to sit through this again. I know, it's terrible. All right, so here's, I'll tell you what I do again. I take the leaf and I put it on here. And I bend it into a little triangle shape. And press it right there, right above the leaf. So, there's what we got. Then I take this one and I bend it over and I start wrapping it around. The one that's going straight up. And I just wrap it like twice. Just 
just enough to secure it so I know it's not going to come undone. And cut it off. All right, now we've got a little triangle above our leaf with a wrap and this wire sticking up. So I've come up here about two inches or an inch and a half, something like that. And I cut that off. So there's what I got. This stresses me out. Can you tell? <laughs> I do not like it. Okay, and then I'm going to take my little piece sticking up and go 90 degrees. Find my round nose pliers where they go. Okay. And then I'm going to just make a loop. Rotate my wires and go on around with my loop. And it looks horrible. I know. It always does. I'm going to grab this one on the loop. And then I'm just going to wrap a couple of times as neatly as I can <laughs> around there to the back. Okay. And now I'm going to cut it off. There we go. And there's another terrible wire wrap. <laughs> but that's what we get. Okay. Sorry, I'm shaking the camera. Um, get a little jump ring. Let's see here. My jump rings are all mixed together in a container. I accidentally spilled them and I have not taken the time to separate them all back out. Okay, so we're going to take this little jump ring. We're going to put this little leaf on here like this. Close it up. Oops. Okay. And then we're going to take a smaller jump ring. And we're going to hang this little leaf right here on our wire wrapped bigger leaf. Okay like that. All right. Now I've got five of these. Thank the dear Lord up in heaven. There's five. Okay. So we're going to work with this here in just a minute. So I'm going to set it aside. Now we got to make a bunch of, of dangles to go or bead connectors to go up the side. So I'm going to alternate them with the leaves. So bead connection, leaf, bead connection, leaf. And I want my leaves, if you can see, they they kind of curve, so I'm going to alternate them. One curving this way and then one going down, and that's how I'm going to do it up the side. So I need to make about four or five more of these guys to go up the side of my, um, my chain alternating these, okay? So I will show you how I do this. So I grab an eye pen, and some of them I'm making longer than others. Um... And some of them, I'm just varying them. I'm doing them all different. I'm not even going to make sure that they're the same on both sides. I want them to be all different. I just think it's pretty that way. But I'll show you what I mean about these bead caps. Okay, so say you've got this teeny tiny fire polish bead. And I'm going to do, let's do a spacer bead. And then I want to put a bead cap on this little teeny tiny fire polish bead because it's fancy. But if you look there, that looks ridiculous. It's too big. But look at these little tiny bead caps, guys. These are so cute. So here I'm going to put it on. Actually, I'm going to double them. I'm going to put one facing down over that bead, the little spacer bead. And then I'm going to put one facing up. And they are tiny. They are so tiny. And then I'm going to put my pretty little fire polish bead on here. And see how perfectly that fits the little fire polish bead? It's really cute. And then I'm going to add another one on top. Maybe. <laughs> Why will that not go on my head pin? Is it blocked? It's got a little bit of a piece of, like, some of the metal coating or something in it. There we go. And see how good that fits the little fire polish bead? I just think it's adorable. Okay, then I'm going to layer this bead cap this way. Put my big, um, frosted glass bead on. Then we'll put this one on. And then we're going to do the same thing on the bottom with the little ones. So one up, facing the bead here, and then one topping it, and then another one going this way, and another spacer. 
and that makes a really pretty little link and it's fancy the the um the spacer or the um bead caps really add a lot i think to your work so if you um when you put bead caps in there it just makes it fancy it shows i don't know it just looks a lot more intricate it looks like you put a lot more work into it than you actually did okay i'm going to twist my loop back and there is a great little connector so so far i've got these three so I think I'm going to make another smaller one. I'm going to have to find a different place for these tools. They're in my way. Okay, so let's see. So I'm going to grab another eye pin. That's a head pin. We don't want that eye pin. And I'm going to use this one of these in here, I think. Let's see. Let's do this. Let's do, um, I want each one to have a frosted glass bead in it. Just because I think that's kind of a pretty focal so I think I'll do this. I'm going to do a bead cap, fire polished, this one. And see, these bead caps I even feel like are too big on that 6mm fire polish bead. I don't like them on there. They just, they make it look like it's got a hat on. I don't like that. So let's try these little ones. I think they'll work on there. Yep, see how? That's just really cute. Um, we'll put another small one on. I'll do a fire, but let me do a spacer and a fire polish bead. Spacer, um, not fire polish, but frosted glass. Yeah, that looks pretty. Another frosted glass, or bead cap, spacer, and then the small ones with the fire polish. That looks really good. And this fire polish, if you noticed, the leaves that I used there that Michelle sent to me that's gonna be too small to make a loop too big to make a loop i have to get either a bigger head pin or eye pin which i've got right here um but anyway what i was saying or trying to say these leaves that michelle sent they have a gold little leafing in them and this bead here has kind of like a gold luster so i think it will tie that all together and it won't clash with the silver okay i'm sorry i uh my eye pin wasn't big enough, so let me go ahead and string these back or put these back on here real quick. I love to make these spacer or these um links, these bead links look really fancy. I just think they're so pretty when you mix a lot of metals and bead caps and stuff in there with them. I think they look beautiful. Okay, and this one's big enough. This eye pin's big enough so I can go ahead and finish it. And I just bend it at a 90 degree angle. And then I cut off about, I don't know, fingers width there maybe. And then I'm going to roll this loop back. Now, I'm going to, this necklace I want to lay kind of toward the collarbone, like right around the collarbone area. Um, I don't want it to be really long. Okay, so there's another link. So let's see, by the time I add my leaves in here, my leaf links in the middle, how big this is, how long this is going to be. So say we do this and this. Actually, I might start with a small one. No, well, probably start with a big one. Okay, this and this. This. One more. Here. And then one more. So I think that's going to be long enough, actually. Um, cause I'm going to add a little Coriana chain to finish it. So yeah, that'll definitely be long enough and then I'll have my, yeah, definitely. Okay. So one, two, three, four, um, bead links and three branches, but I need to make sure when I do the bead links on the other side that I make them equal out to the sizes here. So as you can see, I've got like three long ones and a short one. So I need to do that same thing on the other side. So let's go ahead and make a long one. We'll do this, this. I'm not really going to think it through too awful much. I'm just um, try to get them on there, get them together. Okay, I'm going to need a spacer. And a fire polish bead. I love those fire polish beads. They're so pretty. So sparkly. Okay. 
Okay. And we'll take this loop and roll it back. Okay, and I'm going to make a couple more links. So go ahead and make your links for your other side and we'll be right back. Okay, so I've got my dangles for each side and here are my leaves. There's four there or three there and three there. My leaves for each side. Okay, now what I'm going to do is make my little um, pendant piece for the front that's going to hang down with the flowers. Let's put all our components up here. I've got my dangles for each side. I've got my leaves here. Here's my centerpiece. Let me move some of this other stuff out of the way. And now we're going to do um, the center, the pendant piece that's going to hang down. So you're going to need a, a long eye pin for this. Let me see if I have one really long. This is a pretty long one right here. And here's what we're going to do. You're going to need actually a couple, probably, you don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I always do, a couple of the silver or, um, clear spacers that come like in between beads like these right here, see those, that come in between beads on strands. I save them because I can use them up inside of um, these flowers when I'm making dangles. So like the, I'll show you what I mean. So um, this guy right here, I want to make him dangling down from this guy. So I'm going to put this bead cap over top of him. That's one thing I do. I layer the bead cap and then I'm going to put a couple of these in here like this because if I put this guy on directly without these, watch what it does. It covers up my little one and I don't want to cover it up. I want it to show. So I'm going to stick a couple of these in there and now put him on and let's see how it does and see how now you can see this whole flower on the bottom. And I can either do two in there or I could do one. Let's see what one looks like. I think I like one just a little better or maybe this one and a smaller one if I had a thinner one um, or just a regular seed bead. Oh, small seed bead. This is my bead soup container that I got out here. Let me try just a regular small seed bead and see if that would, if that would, uh, take up enough space. This one's not wanting to fit on my, but that's what I do. I use these little scrap, you know, seed beads for stuff like that. They're great for it. Okay, so let's put this on and see what it looks like now. Okay, so see, it just shows a little bit of your other one, but um, I like to do it that way. And then I'm going to put this bead cap on right here and kind of press it down over top of that bead. See how pretty that looks on there? And then I'm going to take one of these bead caps and I'm going to put one facing down and one facing up like this. And then I'm going to put a little, either a spacer, I may just do a spacer on top. Or I don't know, fire polish. Let me see what the fire polish looks like on there. Fire polish is pretty on there. Yeah, we're going to do that. And then I'm going to take my chain nose pliers and bend this at a 90 degree angle. Now you want this to be tight, okay? Don't let this be loose because you don't want this like flopping all around. And then do I want to do a wrap loop on this? I think I do just to be safe. I am going to do a wrap loop because I don't want it to come loose. So I'm going to wrap it around. Over. I don't like wrap loops. You all know how I feel about these things. But we're going to do it. So I'm going to take it all the way under. And pull it tight. There we go. Now I'm going to grab this loop with my pliers. And yes, I know that loop looks horrible. <laughs> and I'm just going to wrap it around a couple of times right here. And that tightens everything down when you do a wrap loop. But it's also a really secure loop. It's not going to come undone or, you know, it's, it, it's the pendant hanging down. I wouldn't want it to get caught on somebody's clothing or something and it jerked loose. Okay, so let's see if I can tuck this little piece in right here. Okay, so there is our little pendant piece. Let me straighten it up. If it does look crooked, just straighten it up a little. 
Okay, now we have, that's an eye pin up in there. So I could hang something from it if I wanted to. Whoops. And I do know that I think I want to try to hang one of these leaves on here. I just think that would look really pretty. Or maybe one of these little petals. That would be really pretty on there as well. I may hang a little petal out the bottom. I don't know. I could do a little dangle of these leaves out the bottom. That might be kind of cute. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, so this is our center little piece here for our vine. And I think I do want to hang something out the bottom. It would be really cute. Let me see here. Um, but the one thing I did not do was attach this eye pen ahead of time, which is going to be hard to get it in there, but I'm going to try. Let me see if I can get it to hook through up in there. If I can't, then I just won't do it. But I might be able to. Well, I don't know. It's pretty tough. It's deep. If you want to dangle something out of it, you really need to put it, attach that eye pen before... You put this up in here. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it in there or not. Maybe, maybe not. Those pliers are needle nose. They'd probably reach in there if I could get the eye pin to hook through. But I don't think it's going to. It's just going to be too difficult today, so it's not going to do it. Okay, well, forget that. We're not going to take anything out of there. I don't have the patience for it today. Okay, so um, I'm going to take my piece here, and I'm just going to see where I want to attach everything. So I know I want that to be in the middle, and then I know I want some of these leaf dangles to be up the sides like this. I think this is going to be really pretty. So let me just lay them out and we'll see how they look. Put one up here. And I have one more and I don't know, do I want to put it right here? Beside this? Or close to it? Or do I want to go up here with it? Not sure. We'll hook them on and see how they look. Okay, so this requires jump rings. Grab a bunch out here. All right, so for the first one, the middle one, I'm just going to hook it straight on here with a jump ring, just like this. Close it up. Now, if I wanted to hang a petal from that, I could got these little petals that are really cute and I think I may do that. Let me see here. I'm going to put a couple of them on jump rings. I've got that one on a jump ring already. Let me go ahead and put this one on a jump ring. I'm going to dangle one from the other like this. I think I may do one more. Okay, just like, I'm just going to dangle this one from this lower one. Now, if I want to put this, oops, this little jump ring cluster, or little petal cluster here, hanging from here, I think that would be really pretty. Okay, so there we have that. Now, I'm going to go ahead and attach the leaves. And I'm using fairly large jump rings to do most of these because, number one, I want them to kind of dangle down. And number two, the way that these um, branch pieces are kind of, um, they overlap each other a little bit in places. So I need the jump ring to be large enough for it to dangle up in there or to be able to lay up in there. So there, that looks pretty good. And if you need to turn your loop, 
Like if you want it to face more in a different way, you can definitely do that. See how that made that kind of straight? Okay, so let's try another one. And I'm going to want a medium size jump ring for this one because it's going to hang a little bit easier up here. Turn it around. I'm just going to put it right here. I really need to get my other pliers and be doing this the right way. Okay. Okay, so there's that one. <laughs> I think it's going to be cute when we're done. Alright. And grab another jump ring. And this one... Trying to decide if I want to go in here or if I want to just go right here. I think it's going to be a little too crowded if I go there. I could actually go here. That might work. Let's try that. And part of it is just trying and seeing what looks good. Um, you know, if it doesn't look good, we'll just take it off. I'm not so much liking the petals on here. Let's take them off. And just see what it looks like without them. And that's the good thing. If you don't like it, just pull it off and we'll see if it looks better without it. It's easy to do. Well, it should be, unless it gets stuck like this and it just doesn't want to come off. What the heck? <laughs> okay, there we go. Yeah, I like it better without the petals. I can tell that already without those little petals hanging on there. <laughs> okay, and this leaf keeps wanting to flip. Why are you flipping? I need to twist you. Oh no, the little... There, that's all that was flipped. Okay, there we go. Alright, so there's that. Now I've got a couple that I need to put over here on the other side. So let me grab some jump rings. And this one I'm going to put right here. Okay. All right, and one more. Oh, this one doesn't need to be quite as big because it's going on that outer link. Okay, and I did get that one on there backwards. I thought I was, and I did, so let me flip it. Okay, whoops. I've dropped everything I've picked up today. All right. Oh my goodness. Drop it again. Okay. I just want to make sure it hangs the right way. Okay. I keep getting it on there backwards. I'm going to flip it like this. That's one way to make it go forward. Okay, so here's what we've got so far. And I like it so far. I think it looks good. I do not think that it needed the little petals there. I think it looks better without them. All right, so this is our centerpiece. So now we're going to build our little links up the side. So the first thing I'm going to do is choose. Now, these links that I've got going up the side are not the same, and I did that on purpose. I didn't want them all the same. I wanted them different side to side. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to hook them on, and I am going to use jump rings to do this, small ones, but I feel like that the links lay a whole lot better when you hook them on with jump rings. Um, if you just hook them on plain without the jump rings, it seems like they get bound up 
and they don't want to they don't have much movement to them and so they're really difficult to get to lay right um, after you get it all hooked together so I'm just going to use some small dump rings and we're just going to start connecting I don't know I think I may want to put the leaf first actually I think it looks better yeah we're going to do that we're going to put a leaf connection so I'm going to jump ring that on there Just like this just take your jump ring and put your little leaf connector on close it up okay and I'm not gonna worry about those dangling right now I'm just gonna worry about this part and then I'm gonna start hooking my bead connections on now one thing you need to do is make sure that you're they're facing the same way so your little loops so take your bead connections hold one in one plier one in the other plier and twist until both pliers are facing upright and that will make sure that your little loops are aligned the same way they need to be this one is already okay so I'm gonna go ahead and hook it on now I found the easiest way to do this to get your um, whoops I was gonna hook it on with a jump ring the easiest way to do this to get your connections to lay flat and to just be um, lined up really well is to keep this laying flat on your table. Take your jump ring, hook your jump ring on, and then with this laying flat on your table, hook your bead connection on, and then close your jump ring and make sure everything lays flat. Okay, see that? You want it to lay flat. If things are twisted up, it's not going to hang right when you're done. So go ahead and grab another jump ring. I'm going to pull this down so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to put the leaf connection on. Now, this leaf connection kind of faces up, so I want this one to go the opposite way. And I'm just going to hook it through here. Keep everything laying flat. Just like that. And then hook this one in facing the way that I want it to go. Whoops. Close that up. And now everything lays flat on the table. Okay. We're going to scoot it down and we're going to add our next bead connection. And I'm going to do this little one next. So I'm going to pick this up, hook my jump ring through it. And then hook this guy through. And then just make sure that everything lays flat. Okay? Just like that. We've got our next leaf connection here. Go ahead and hook it on to this guy. I want to make this one facing up, so hook it on the right way. Okay, there we go. I'll do this last one and then I will pause the video and you guys can hook all yours together while I finish hooking mine together. And then we'll come back. Okay, last one. And lay it out. Alright, so go ahead and get all yours hooked together and come on back. Okay, so we're back and we've got both of our sides with all our links and now... I did not add the last two here. I just um, don't need them because I want to finish this off with the Coriana chain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Coriana chain and I haven't cut it yet. It's just all one piece and I'm going to go ahead and attach the lobster and the crimp on one side here. I just put my, um, I always say lobster, the clamshell in the crimp. Put my clamshell on, crimp it down. Put my clamshell on, then put my crimp on, then crimp it down. Crimp the crimp down. Then I'm going to take this, pull it to make sure it's secure, and if it is, you close it right up, okay? Now, I'm going to hook this to this link right here. 
Now this one I'm just going, no, I think I am going to use a jump ring because I don't want to take a chance on it being, getting bound up. They just tend to do that when you don't use the jump rings. I found anyway, that's been my experience. So here we go. I'm just going to hook this onto here and onto here. Now, what you want to do is you want to hold it up to you or measure for whoever you're making it for and see how long you want it to be. Okay, so I'm going to hold this up and see how long that I need the Coriana chain to be because I don't want it to, I don't want this necklace to be real long. So it looks like I need about an extra five inches over here after I held it up to myself. Okay, so I'm going to cut like right about here. And um, then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side with the clamshell and the um, crimp. So I'm going to take my clamshell, put it on. And then take my crimp bead and put it on. Crimp it down. And slide my clamshell up and make sure it's secure. Okay, and then close it up and we're going to attach it there with another jump ring, just like we did the other side. Okay. Just like this. Now, I'm going to take this and measure and make sure that I have the same length on both sides and cut it to where it's even. I'm just laying it out and cutting it even with the other side that I've already cut. Okay. All right. And then to finish the top, we're going to do the same thing that we did with the clamshell and the crimp. So take your clamshell and put it on. Then put your crimp bead on. Same exact way we did the other one. Get it on there now. Okay. Just like this. Crimp him down. He's tight. Snug that up. Make sure it's good and close it. Same on the other side. This is how you finish off Coriana chain. Super easy. If you can find your clamshell, which mine seems to be a wall at the moment, of course. I don't have any laying out here. I probably dropped it in the floor. No, there it is. Okay. Put your clamshell on, crimp bead on, which I just had here a second ago. There we go. Whoops. Crimp bead. Close it up. Tighten it. Crimp it down. Real good. And then pull to make sure that you're secure and close it up. All right. Now, I always put an extender most of the time. I don't want to say always. I most of the time put an extender on, and I'm going to do it right now. Just because even though I'm probably going to keep this necklace, I still like the option of being able to shorten it or lengthen it. So, stick an extender on there, and I like to make a little dangle for my extender. So, I'm going to grab a head pin. This is a big head pin. Do I have a smaller one? These are all eye pins. Thought I had some head pins out here. They're probably mixed in so well. There's a little one. Um, so yeah, just grab a head pin. I'm just going to make a quick little bead dangle. I'm just going to go spacer bead, little fire polish, bigger fire polish, and that's it. Just a cute little dangle. It just adds to it. You don't have to do it, but I think it's nice. <laughs> I don't know. Even though I'm probably going to keep this necklace, I still think it's nice to just do the little dangle on there. Roll your loop back and stick it right on the end. And it's just cute. I don't know, just a cute little way to finish it. 
Okay, and then we're going to take our jump ring, another jump ring, and we're going to hook our lobster on. Just hook your lobster on here. And then put your jump ring on there and close it up. Now, let's take a look at this necklace. Is there anything else that I want to do to it? Do I want to add any more petals or dangles or any of that kind of stuff on here? And actually, I don't think I do. I think I'm just going to leave it. And I may even take this one off because I'm not liking the way that it hangs. This one right here. I keep twisting it and it keeps untwisting or twisting back the other way. I don't know. We'll put it on the form and see. So let me stick it on the form and we'll take a look at it. Okay, so here's the finished product. I actually really like it. I think I'm just going to leave it like it is. I'm not going to add any more um, to it anywhere. I think it looks pretty good. So I like the way this turned out. Um, yeah, I just think it's pretty. It reminds me of a forest or something. So, um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like I said, all these products, pretty much all of them are on my website. I will link it in the description box below. And I'm going to get off here and get packed for Orlando. So, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!